Now Elementor Pro 3.4 has just been released and with it it's brought a couple of WooCommerce centric updates and tweaks. In this video, I'm going to go through some of those things, talk about them and give you my opinions on them. But as always, I would love to get your opinions in the comment section below. So once you watch the video, give me your feedback down there. Okay, so let's start off with the first new addition, and that is the ability to customize the mini cart in several different ways. So let's take a look at that right now. So first of all, let me just quickly start off by showing you what I'm going to be covering in this quick video. There's two things. First of all is the new mini cart the kind of updates to that, how it allows us to control it, style it, and various other things. And the second thing is how we can now use dynamic tags for WooCommerce-based products anywhere on the site. We're not restricted to just a single product and the archive templates. We can now use those anywhere. As you can see by this ball cactus, the buy now button and so on, this is all dynamically being pulled in from a specific product. And if I make changes to that product, they'll be reflected anywhere that we're referencing those dynamic tags. So let's go about taking a quick look at how we can do all this. Let's start off with the mini card side of things. So I'm back at the dashboard of WordPress. I'm going to hop over to the template section and open up the theme builder. Inside there, I'm going to open up my test header in Elementor. And once Elementor loads in, we now have our header section at the top. Let's go ahead and select our mini card. Once you do that, we now have the mini cart options on the left hand side. So first of all, you've got the kind of icon you want to use, whether you want to display the items indicator and so on. So we've got a selection of different kind of icons. You can choose whatever you kind of want. Pretty self-explanatory, really, what they do. The bubble is basically whether you want to show the number of products inside the basket or the cart at any given time. And we currently have two different kinds of options. We've got the bubble which is the red circle, which we can style if we want to, and also just the plane, which just drops the number in afterwards, which in my opinion, just kind of looks a little bit odd. If you're going to use either of these, the bubble probably is the best option. You can also go ahead and choose whether you want to enable the hide empty, and that will just hide that if there's nothing in your cart. And if you want to, you can show your subtotal or hide your subtotal if you want a kind of streamlined kind of experience with this. We'll leave the subtitle back on or subtotal back on. You can also adjust the alignment of this so you can position this as you want inside your header or anywhere you want to kind of use this particular widget. Next up, you've got your cart options. And this is kind of where the, the real meat and bones of this entire sort of uh, element it really is. You can choose between a couple of different cart types. We've got a mini cart, which is what you can currently see which is basically you open it up and you get the little sort of pop out uh, sort of option. The other option is the side cart, which will open up an entire right or left hand side position that will show you all of your cart information inside there. So instead of a pop up, it pulls in from the side. Again, we can test this out inside the browser by simply clicking the button and then let it pop out. You can also choose how you interact with the actual cart itself. So this is currently set to on click, but you can set it to on hover if you want to. And this will just show up then whenever you hover over the button itself. So whichever option you want and the position can also be adjusted directly from here as well. So left or right, depending on when you set up. Let's just set those back to what they were. You can also go ahead and do things like the close cart, the position, remove items, price and quantity, whether you want to put dividers in there, which buttons you actually want to show up inside you. So pretty cool and kind of useful. So you know, you can easily come in and just set up what you want. So you might want to remove the view cart and just allow them to go straight to checkout. You can do all those kinds of things. Additional options. This is kind of useful. You've got automatically open the cart. And what this will do is whenever you add a new product to the cart, it will automatically open the cart up to show you a new product's been added. So just let me quickly enable that and update the page. And I'll demonstrate exactly what I mean. Let's go down and just find a product. We'll say I like the look of this one. I'll add that to my cart and you can see the cart pops up. Simple as that. Now it is a kind of a little bit frustrating that this pops up, but it doesn't actually give you any notification. You can kind of see, let me just add another product to my cart. Now we have no idea until we scroll back up the page that something's been added. So maybe there's a better way of doing this. Maybe you want to sort of set your header up to be a sticky header. So at least your header will always be evident wherever you are on your page and your design however you want to work with it. So that is kind of a little bit frustrating. It might be nice to have that sort of scroll to the top just to let you know that something's been added and to show up inside there. You also have to, the option to automatically update your cart. You can see that if an item is removed, this is all controlled via Ajax. So if we expand this out, for example, and take off the first option, you can see the cart updates, everything updates, the totals, all those kinds of things. So again, a nice 
way of making a seamless experience for your end user. Someone's looking to purchase, moving those little barriers out of the way. Pretty cool. Nice to see those options inside there. And then obviously you have the full complement of options then to go ahead and style everything. Your text, your background colors for pretty much every element, the cart, products, buttons, messages, everything. So you shouldn't have any problem making the styling consistent with the design you're working on. And that's kind of what I've done here. I've just taken the basics and just tweaked the buttons to make sure that everything is kind of in keeping with the layout that I'm using for this demo test sort of test site. So next on the list is the ability to start using WooCommerce based dynamic tags inside Elementor Pro. Now, until this point, we've been restricted to where we can use this dynamic information, specifically to the single product template and the product archive templates. But now we can pretty much use these anywhere on our entire site. So let's take a quick look at how we can start to integrate this into our designs and just some of the benefits you get from doing it. So in this example, this is just a standard page inside Elementor. So just my ordinary home page. Normally you couldn't actually use dynamic WooCommerce data, things like a product, title, price, those kinds of things, anywhere on your page, unless it was a template for the single product or for the archive of products. But now we've kind of rectified that. So let's just get rid of some of these. Let's delete this from here. Let's delete our title from here. And let me just show you how all this works. Okay, so let's go ahead and just drag in a heading, position that way we want. We're gonna use the dynamic tag option. And if we scroll through, we'll see that we now have all our WooCommerce options. So product prices, ratings, sale prices, descriptions, those kinds of things. So let's say we want a product title. Let's click on the little wrench icon and now we can go ahead and choose which product we want. So let's just say we're gonna search for ball cactus. There we go, we'll add our ball cactus in. You can see that now pulls in the title for us. And we've got the advanced option. So your before, after and fallback if you want to fill those out. So we'll say we're happy with that. We'll do the same again. So we'll just put another heading underneath here. This time we're gonna set this to something like H4, for example, so it's a little bit smaller. And again, use the dynamic tags option, scroll through until we find the option for our product short description, and just do the same again. Just click, choose the product you want. So we'll say ball cactus again, there we go. And that now pulls in the description. And again, you've got your advanced options and we can style this how we want, adjust the alignments and so on. So easily come into typography, make this a little smaller, maybe a little heavier and adjust the line height on there. And there we go. Pretty cool, pretty simple, really easy to do. But the nice thing is now, if we update this page, let's go and take a look at our homepage. And as you can see on our homepage, there's our dynamic information, the title, the short description and the price. Let's just go back into our dashboard, open our product app, and we'll just change the name of this. This is the light version for some odd reason. And we'll just add something on here as well. There we go. We'll update our changes. We'll hop back over onto our homepage and refresh. And you can see everything now updates. So this will happen anywhere you use this dynamic information, the same way that all dynamic tags do when you're working with Elementor. Uh, it's very easy to work with and it's a great way of creating things. But now, like I say, we're not limited to working with just templates. So third on the list is the ability to now add in some additional pagination options, but we are kind of still limited to only being able to use these with the post widget. Unfortunately, that's the only place we can currently use them, but this is something that Elementor are looking into, expanding into some of the other tools like the archive listings and so on. So let's take a look at how we can use these, the options they have, and how this can open up some additional possibilities. Now, another new feature that currently only works with the post widget. So any other widgets that like work with this kind of method, you know, archives and so on, it's not going to work currently. Apparently they are working on it, but right now it is only the post widget. It's the ability to use the infinite load and so on. So we've got a couple of new different ways of working with pagination. So I've inserted a post loop, go to the pagination option, and you can see if we open that up now, we have load on click and we have infinite scroll. So if we choose the load on click, for example, we now get an option underneath that gives us the load on click and we can then go ahead and set the spinner we want, the text we want to use it, the alignment, those kinds of things. Don't worry, it says no more posts on here. There are more posts, but it's still one of those things. Okay, if you want to, you can also adjust the no more post message. If you want to create a custom one, you can do that inside here as well. And also let's go ahead and take a look at the infinite scroll. So we choose that option then nothing really shows up on there. We get even less options now other than this sort of no more post message. But let's just update this and let's hop over to the homepage. We'll refresh this to make sure we've got the newest version loaded. And if we scroll down now, you can see as I scroll, we start to load more options in. 
So this is the kind of thing that is kind of useful and it's probably got a lot of use cases for a lot of people. Whether you find it something that's that important is going to be down to the individual and the project you're working on. But I just wanted to mention it because that is one of the new features that's in this 3.4 version of Elemental Pro. So that's the key new features that Elemental Pro 3.4 brings with it. Now for me, they are nice to have, but I would much rather see the time invested into opening up the possibilities for customizing the account page, the customizing the cart and the checkout pages. Those are key features that I think we need to create a fully fledged WooCommerce customization solution using Elemental Pro. But as always, this is just my opinion. What's your opinion? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. But if you didn't, well, hit the thumbs down button twice as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.